Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Iftikhar Khan, and today I'd like to invite you to join me on my trip to one of California's most magnificent national parks, Death Valley. This park has been protected from human development by the U.S. government because it features such astonishing variety of animals and plants, and it also features incredible scenery. California has been especially blessed in this regard, as it features so many world-class destinations, including Joshua Park, Sequoia National Park, Death Valley, and of course Yosemite. Today I'm going to share some personal footage shot by me in the park, and at the same time I'll share some historical and scientific knowledge in the process. I hope you enjoy the program. Let's go take a look. The 20th century. Another interesting site to see is the charcoal kilns, which were built in 1867 and were used to reduce trees to charcoal in a process of slow burning in low oxygen. This fuel was then transported to mines in Death Valley to feed smelting and ore extraction operations. The kilns were abandoned three years after they were built, but were recently restored in the last couple of decades by local Indians. The racetrack is famous for rocks that mysteriously move across its surface. To this day, nobody's claimed to actually seen the rocks move, but the tracks left behind are obvious. The dramatic scenery, combined with the mystery of how these rocks move, attracts scientists from all around the globe. Most speculate that the strong winds, combined with wet mud, must be at least in part responsible. Yubihibi Crater is a large volcanic crater that is half a mile wide, 800 feet deep, and 4 to 7,000 years old. The crater was formed when hot magma and cold groundwater combined, creating a steam explosion that blasted rocky debris out from the base at over 100 miles an hour. What was left from this violent explosion is the huge hole we see today. When we visited, we hiked around the top. There are also trails that lead down into the bottom of the hole for the motivated hiker. Speaking of hiking, Death Valley offers numerous trails for hikers of all ages and stages. There are short one-hour hikes that the whole family can enjoy or multiple day treks that will challenge the fittest hiker. A short hike that we really enjoyed was through the Golden Canyon. This gorge features sandstone rocks in an astonishing variety of colors. A few decades ago, a paved road wound through the Golden Canyon, but the violent storms that sometimes hit the area washed it away. These storms pounded the canyon, forming numerous dry waterfalls on the trail. The trail winds its way through the Red Cathedral, where most visitors turn back. Further on is Zabriskie Point, a multicolored rock formation devoid of any vegetation. Coming at the right time of the day will reward the experienced photographer with incredible pictures. Another great spot for pictures is the aptly titled Artist Drive where these pictures were taken. While we were here, we also enjoyed another one hour hike to this natural bridge. This huge bridge is another example of how extreme conditions can change the landscape. For those of you who are looking for a more challenging and rewarding walk, a hike to the top of Wilrose Peak maybe just what you're looking for. We started the hike early in the morning and as we got closer to the top we were rewarded with cool temperatures and incredible views. The roughly four mile hike includes a 2,000 foot gain in elevation so we made sure to bring lots of water and took many rest stops. 
We were so high up that there was still snow on the ground in some areas. At the top, we had a 360 degree view of the valley, including bad water in the distance. Bad water back there. Salt mines, salt deposits. As you've hopefully noticed, there is a lot to see and do at Death Valley. Since it is located fairly far from Los Angeles, most visitors tend to stay at least one day in the park. There are a few hotels and resorts to choose from, from both inside and outside the park. When we visited, we chose to camp in one of Death Valley's numerous campsites. Setting up a tent usually takes less than half an hour, and the best part is that it's free. Plus, instead of eating at restaurants, we could barbecue our own dinner and enjoy a campfire at night. We spent three nights in Death Valley, which only allowed us to barely scratch the surface in seeing this wonderful national park. We look forward to Inshallah coming back soon.